Hey what's up guys, it's your girl Robin coming at you and today is the last day of 2017. Low key happy about it, cause like, you'll see why. But also a little bit sad as well, because you'll see why. 2017 has been definitely an eventful year and kept me on my toes and I'm just like, well, well then. I'm a little bit scared going into 2018, but I'm also excited to go into 2018. Mainly because I turned 20! I turned 20! I reached two decades old. <laughs> also because I just really like even numbers, so I'm, I'm looking forward to 2018. Obviously, by the title of this video, I will be doing a recap of 2017. I do this every year. I've done this every single year on my channel since I started it. So that this is my fifth video for doing a recap. Wow. Fourth or fifth video of doing re- Wow. That's interesting. But yeah, I'm going to be recapping 2017 for you guys because it's been a very eventful year. Everything that is in this recap has some significant meaning to me. I may forget some things or jump over some other things or not even mention some things as well. Don't get me wrong, I still believe that everything that happened in 2017 was either amazing or sad, but the events I'm about to explain to you guys are things that are very significant to me and I just want to recap them for you guys. So the first event I have to recap for you guys was at the beginning of the year and it crushed my heart at the time and it still kind of does but after finding out the true meaning behind it, it doesn't really crush me anymore but it is Eljo leaving Teen Top. He left Teen Top in February and he ended up suing Top Media I believe and um, yeah so if you guys don't know Eljo ended up leaving Teen Top in February and for those of you who don't even know who Eljo is and know who Teen Top is and only thought that they were a five member group, they were a six member group and they're my ultimate bias group. Like, you see Teen Top here, I have a Teen Top poster here, you look on this wall over here, it's all Teen Top. Teen Top is my ultimate bias group, so to see a member leave my ultimate bias group was really hard for me. Like, yes I've seen members leave other groups, but I never thought that it would happen to my ultimate bias group. And to see it happen to my ultimate bias group crushed me, especially since Eldra was the reason why I got into Teen Top. So yeah, I was really crushed, but after finding out like everything else about it in like May, like behind everything, I was like, I ain't so sad anymore about Eldra leaving. I'm actually proud of him for leaving. And that's a whole another video in itself, so I'm not gonna talk about it. Now continuing on with the Teen Top trend, Team Dog had their first comeback as a five member group in April and even one first on Music Bank. I am very proud of Team Top. They showed that even with losing a member, they can still come back and do their amazing footwork, amazing songs, and all of that good jazz. And I'm very proud of them. But there's a part of me that's just kind of like, are we ever going to see another Team Top comeback? So I'm just a little bit scared about that. And I'm also wondering. Top media, where's Chunji Solo? <laughs> where's Chunji Solo debut? Just wondering. But yeah, Team Top had the first comeback as five, and it was very interesting. I was very proud of them because they were finally making a comeback after a year, and that's like an occasion with Team Top. Like they don't make a comeback. They make a comeback every year. The next event that happened was in May when BTS went to the Billboard Music Awards and ended up winning the top social artists. That was a big moment for K-pop all in itself. Whether you're an ARMY, a BTS fan, or you could care less about BTS, that was a big moment in K-pop for in general. BTS came and represented K-pop in America and ended up winning to top social artists that has been won for six years in a row by Justin Bieber. So BTS came out here, did their crap, did their shiz, and ended up winning BBMAs, and I'm very proud of them for that. Not too long after the BBMAs, I ended up graduating from high school. That was a very eventful moment for me, even though it has nothing to do with K-pop. It's very eventful for me personally. Graduating from high school is very awesome. Like, I never thought I would ever graduate high school. Honestly, not even my family did. My family were like, oh, we're so proud of you. I, we never thought that you would get this far. I was like, what did you think? I was going to be a drug addict and an alcoholic? No. No! Me? No! The only thing I'm addicted to is K-pop, so just buy me some albums, please. But, you know, graduating high school is awesome, and I'm just happy that chapter is out of my life now, because I've had a rough four years of high school. 
you know, I never really fit in and I had friends but I never hung out with them outside of school and stuff like that. So it, it was really hard in high school but now that I'm in college, I can fit in easier. The next thing is kind of sad, um, especially for me, it was Sistar's disbandment. Now Sistar ended up disbanding around the summertime and it really hurt a lot of people because Sistar was that summer girl group. They always released summer bops and I just started recently liking Sistar like before their disbandment. Like I knew Hyorin, I knew Bora, and I knew Basom and I was just like oh okay okay and then this all happens and I'm like well dang but so you still going strong she just came back solo and I was like okay girl but you know I was just getting into Sistar and now I'm not being able to see them promote as Sistar anymore. It's really heartbreaking. I low-key wish I went to KCON last year or two years ago or whenever they went so I could see Sistar live. Sadly I couldn't because I was broke. But yeah, that was really sad for me. On a happier note though, in July, my son Samuel ended up debuting solo. Oh my gosh, that was an amazing time because I love Samuel so much and to see this kid debut solo after so much, after everything he's been through makes me really happy and love him and I love him and I hope he is well and is doing really alright and taking care of his health and everything. The next thing is probably the best thing that happened to me in 2017 which was going to KCON LA. I have been dreaming to go to KCON LA since 2012 or 2013, I can't remember, but I have been dreaming to go to KCON LA for so long and the fact that it finally got to happen is amazing and mind-blowing and I can't believe I got to go and I'm going to be going to KCON again next year, but if you guys want to know which one I'll be going to, just stick around and you'll find out later. But I got to go to KCON LA, it was awesome, amazing. I got to meet up with so many people. I met some fans and I met some friends of mine that were from a long time ago that we never talk, Dre. And I got to like meet everyone that I either look up to or that I talk to all the time on Twitter or stuff like that. I got to meet them in person. I'm very happy because you know, I'm like, yeah, I'm a real person, I promise. So yeah, and I'm hoping that next year I will be invited to KCON so I can show you guys some awesome panel ideas I have for KCON. Next is kind of a little like, uh, you know, it, it, I don't even know how to explain it with a word other than just that noise. And it was starting college. So I started college this year. Ugh. That, that, you, like, just, I don't, mm, see, school in general, I just really suck at, and I, I have the, what, the attention span of a goldfish, as I like to put it, and doing school work is really difficult when you also have a K-pop YouTube channel, and everything you see on YouTube, on your recommenda recommended, is K-pop related, and, you know, it's just really difficult, but I ended up getting through this first semester, I'm not really looking forward to next week. But I did start college, it's awesome because, you know, I finally feel like a grown-up, which is awesome because, I mean, I'm 19 years old now, like, I should feel like a grown-up, but, yeah, I started college, it was awesome, and there was a little bit of drama, and it was literally, like, high school drama, and I was like, okay, I'm not here for the high school drama, I left that in high school, so, yeah, but other than that, college has been good, I've been surviving, and I don't go back for another two weeks, so I'm good. So, the next event I have to talk about is the K-pop club and my group of friends. So, if you guys don't know, my college actually has a K-pop club. It's actually fairly small but fairly big at the same time. It's like right in the middle. And through this K-pop club, I got to meet some amazing friends that I feel like will be lifelong friends, hopefully. And I like to call ourselves Girl 7. They don't even know that I'm calling this it that. And if you, hey guys, if you're watching, we're Girl 7. Because if you guys don't know, GOT7, which are these lovely men behind me. I think we all like GOT7. I believe so. We all like GOT7. And <laughs> eventually we started naming off members that we are most similar to. And it just ended up being like that and literally the fact that I resemble my bias is hilarious because like it's low-key true because you know what how Jin Young does that whole like 
judging thing, judging face. I do that all the time to them, and they're just like, okay, Jin Young. I'm like, you mean old Jin Young? Freaking Taylor. If it wasn't for the K-pop club, I wouldn't have met these awesome friends. Because honestly, I don't even talk to any of my high school friends. Like, I don't even talk to them anymore, which is actually kind of depressing. I'll see them around the campus, and I'm like, oh, hey, what's up? And they're like, oh, hey, Robin, how you been? I'm like, good, how you been? Like, we kind of talk a little bit, but then we go our separate ways. So, I don't even talk to them anymore. So, it's like, it's really nice to have friends that, you know, one, understand me, and understand where I'm coming from with loving these lovely men all throughout my wall, freaking room. I was about to say wall, room, even my ceiling. And it's also just really nice to have books along with you that, like, get your humor. Because a lot of people don't get my humor, but they do it. I just love it. Okay, let me stop. The next event that we have to talk about is probably the biggest event that happened in 2017 for K-pop, which is BTS performing at the AMAs. That was huge. Oh my gosh. I don't even believe that happened, to be honest. I'm just kind of like, wait, what? Wait, what? BTS performed at the AMAs. That was a huge moment for K-pop, whether you like BTS or whether you hate BTS. It was a big moment for K-pop in general. It was getting K-pop on the map. And now I feel like it's low-key gonna become mainstream eventually. And I'm not ready for that. I like being able to know something that no one else knows about. I like that, because then I feel special. <laughs> but BTS put their name out there and also dropped a freaking song with designer and Steve Aoki. Like, and it's playing on the radio here. Okay, let me just tell you something. Loving is very late. When I heard that they were playing Mic Drop Remix on the radio in Lubbock, I was like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, what? They're playing Mic Drop Remix in Lubbock. And Lubbock is lame. Never up to date with anything. Okay. So, yeah, BTS going to the AMAs was pretty big for K-pop. And I'm proud of them. But they're really busy now, and I hope eventually they get some rest. The next event I have to talk about is... Very sad. It's also very recent, so it's still a little bit touchy. And it's been about almost two weeks since this happened, and it was a uh, member, shiny member Chong Hyun's passing. Um, if you guys don't know, uh, Chong Hyun ended up committing suicide due to depression, and it's really hard to talk about even now. Um, I still think I've gotten over it by now. I really haven't. I, every time I think about it, I'll just start tearing up. And it hurts me, personally. Um, if you guys don't know, Shiny is a huge group to me. Uh, they were the second group I got into after Team Top. And I liked Chonghyun. Uh, Chonghyun was technically my bias checker, but also my bias at the same time. Yes, I love Taemin. Yes, I love Minho. Yes, I love Onyu. Yes, I love Ki. But Chonghyun just had a uh, special place in my heart. When I first heard Juliet, I was floored. Juliet was an amazing song that he wrote, and to see him progress in his writing and production and him becoming a musician, I saw that. And him taking his life because of something that is kind of shamed upon in Korea, it hurts me because I also have this illness see that it affected him so hard to where he had to take his own life it makes me scared because what's going to happen to me in the next five years? Am I going to take my own life? I freaking hope not. But seeing this all happen, I hope it makes Korea realize that this is a thing. Depression is a thing. It's, it's nothing to joke around. And I hope if they realize that idols do have this mental illness, I hope they realize that, oh, we need to get them help. And I hope entertainment companies will also go on this and get every idol that they believe has depression or even said that they have depression, get them a therapist. Because just one, Suwasu, just one, you did well. We want you here. Could save a life. And it makes me wish that I saw Chonghyun saw Shiny, but sadly I couldn't. Because when Shiny came to Dallas last year, it was right after Team Top, so I didn't have the money for that. 
but I wish I did. And I wish I got to meet them and tell them all. But sadly, I couldn't do that. And uh, after seeing this all happen, it makes me want to beat this mental illness for him. Not for me. Well, mostly for me. But for him as well. Because he couldn't beat it. So, yeah. That was really hard for me. It still really is. I'm still barely eating anything now. And, yeah. But, it was really hard. But I'm happy to see that everyone in K-pop, everyone, came together at that moment comfort those who have been hurt by this massive, heartbreaking moment in k -pop. So, yeah. But we're gonna end this video on a good note because originally that was the end, but I'm just like, no, 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 we gotta end on a good note, and we are. So, Robin's gonna be talking about the channel. So if you guys don't know, I believe I started the year with about 1,500 subscribers? Around there. And I ended up gaining a thousand more? How? I mean, yes, it's nothing big for, you know, compared to other YouTubers, but for me that's big. Because you guys are subscribing to me! I'm a dork! How? Why do you- why are you watching me? Like, that's what I need to know. Like, why are you watching me? But I ended up gaining a thousand subscribers this year, which is insane. 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 And not only that, I ended up surpassing 600,000 views. Let's do the math. 600,000 views, which is 2,600 subscribers. So because of that, that means that some of you aren't subscribed to me, but you still come back and watch my videos. Be sure to hit that subscribe button while you're like, you know, here. But it's just so amazing to see that you guys are watching the content I put out for you guys because, you know, I love doing YouTube. And I promise next year I'll actually be a YouTuber and try it editing and try making videos hilarious for you guys. But it's insane to think about how far I've come within the year and I'm really excited for next year for YouTube to see how far I'll come next year. But yeah guys, that was my recap for 2017. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys think I left out anything, put it down in the comments below. I want to know what you guys think is really memorable of 2017. And yeah, I will see you guys next year. Annyeong!